Hey y'all, I'm James Wright, and welcome to my shop. It's that time of year again where we pull out all the testing equipment to do the glue test one more time. For those of you who don't know about the glue test, this has been an ongoing test that I've had for years. I have several videos covering 64 different types of glues, testing them in different applications and putting them through the rigors to actually find out which one is the strongest. However, knowing which one is the strongest right off the bat may not be that important. Which one is the strongest in a lifetime of use? And so I've started a long-term test where every six months I pull out this and I go through another sample of tests to see where are they at now. And I just did it for the two-year mark. So if you actually want to see this whole testing rig in use and how it all works, I say go take a look at the old videos. And those ones are actually going to be comparing all 64 glues. For this one, we only have a selection of seven of the main glues that we're going to be doing the long-term test on. I have several videos showing the whole test as well as a live video showing the whole process. You can actually go through and see that. And then several videos on the actual steps in looking through the information and digging into that. A crazy amount. It was one of the most detailed spreadsheets I've ever made, and it's a lot of fun. However, what about the long-term viability? Today we're going to look at that. Two years ago, I glued up all of these boards, and each board has seven test samples on it. So there's three sets per board. That means that I'm going to need a lot of these boards because I need to do 10 sets every time I test it. And for the first while, we're doing them every six months. And then later we're gonna do them once a year and then eventually we'll probably move it to once every five years. And I might stretch it out even longer depending upon how long I live. So a lot of these have the center set taken out. Um, later on, we'll be taking these ones out sometime in the future. And all of these are being stored in my garage. And my garage gives a very wide range of expansion and contraction, so it's a pretty good open as opposed to being in the air conditioned in my basement, uh, they actually get to see some of the normal use from air movement. So as humid as it gets in the summer to as dry as it gets in the winter, um, they actually get to see the full temperature range swing as well. So yes, uh, that means there are a lot of these boards stored up in my garage and they will be for a long time to come. Now I need to clear something out about the test because a lot of people were wondering, wow, I thought that the wood was the weak point and the wood would almost always break, not the glue. And yes, that's generally the case. However, my setup is designed to put all of the stress right on the glue joint and try and make the glue itself fail. So most of the time, the wood is going to fail long before the glue. But I want to have an actual glue test to know how strong is the actual glue. But I can't always make it 100% perfect. Sometimes the glue shears off nicely and sometimes it takes some wood with it. So in some of these cases, like this one, there's 100% of shear off. Um, the, the wood broke 100% of the length. In this one, there was a corner. So this one was about 75% of the wood broke and 25% of the glue. This one was about 50-50. You can see the, the chunks of wood that are left on here, but there's large chunks where the glue failed. Uh, so this one is about 50%. This one's about 25%. And so I, I have a broad classification on there. However, the vast majority of them broke right on the glue line. And so there isn't any wood shearing on here. Here. It's the glue that broke. So you need to keep all of that in mind when I start talking about the adjustment uh, because I can give you the exact numbers if they broke, but this one breaking on the wood and this one breaking on the glue, are they equal or are they a little different? And so I have them with and without adjustment so you can make up your own mind on that. But speaking of which, let's go over to the spreadsheet and take a look. So welcome to my computer. Let's take a look at this beautiful spreadsheet. I mean, isn't this thing absolutely gorgeous? This is one of my favorite spreadsheets of all time because it's just, it's really, really beautiful. Um, so to answer a few things, number one, I was talking about earlier, the breakage over here is a key. Um, dark red means 100% of the wood broke. Red means 75%. Orange is 50, yellow is 25. You'll see those over here in the main column with the raw data. Raw data is the item that actually broke and it is three quarter by one inch. And so it's not exactly one PSI because that would be one inch by one inch. And so I have that adjusted over to the second column, which is PSI. Um, so I have the breakage in the raw data and all of the colors in this is just giving you an idea. Bright red being the worst glue, bright green being the best glue, um, and everything in between. So basically anything that is a brownish color on up through green is usually a pretty good glue. Usually I'm gonna say that any glue with a PSI over 150 is generally considered a, a decent glue. Uh, if it gets over 200 PSI, it's a good glue. 
um, because that's around where the breaking strength of most woods are. Some are more, some are less. But this is all of the long grain to long grain testing. And we scroll down through all of these glues and then we come down here to the long grain to end grain testing. See, those don't fare as well because end grain isn't quite as good. Uh, and then we scroll down even farther to gap filling. And gap filling, yeah, there's some of them that don't do really well and some of them that do okay. And then we scroll down even farther to the exterior glues. And you can see a lot of these absolutely fail under water. Um, and some of them do fairly well. Some of the odd ones out here that really surprised me, Type Bond 3 is not an exterior glue. <laughs> I know they say it is, and they say it's been tested. It, it fails on me. Um, and I, 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 I don't trust Type Bond 3 to, um, to water. Um, but that's old data. We want to come on down here. This is the yearly data. So right here we have, this is the original from year zero. And then we have six months, one year, 18 months, and two years. And so we've gone through and tested these seven glues. Number one, the 315 high glue, homemade high glue that I made. I have a video showing that. Uh, Type Bond 2, uh, 2P10 gel. I chose 2P10 gel because it was the strongest of the CA glues. Uh, most of the CA glues were about the same. Uh, they just had slightly different characteristics to how they functioned. But their, their glue pressure is pretty decent. Uh, and then West Systems uh, 205 Fast, uh, DAP Weldwood Plastic Resin. Um, I, uh, yeah, in past videos, I've mispronounced that over and over again. And then Elmer's Wood Glue Max. And I chose these because they were the best example of each of their category, um, uh, their, their category of glue. And so those are the ones that are getting tested long term. Um, particularly the two high glues, because I had a lot of people wondering what's the difference between the homemade high glue and the store bought high glue. I wish I had put in like an old brown or a tight bond, um, but those are in there. So the interesting thing is to see all of the raw data through here and then all of their averages combined. Um, and so what I have here is their average is just the numbers. Where did they actually break? What is the breaking strength that I measured? And then over here I have adjusted and that is from the breakage. So just before I showed you with this key here, um, if it was 100% wood, then I gave it another 100, um, uh, another 100 on the adjustment. If it was 75, then I gave it another 75. If it was a 50% wood breakage, I gave it another 50. If it was 25% wood breakage, I gave it another 25. Those are really very subjective. They are not objective terms. And so I don't put a whole lot of strength in it, but I want to actually, I want to capture that data. So over in this column, we have the estimated breakage that's how much I would add on to it. Um, and then over here, we have the adjusted average. So that takes the average, it adds in the breakage, and you get these numbers here. And so we can come down here and look at all of their numbers, the yearly average, as well as the yearly adjusted average. The adjusted average includes the breakage as well. And then we can come down to the graph, and this is where things really start to make sense, and you can kind of see how things come out. I'm going to start here with the adjusted average, and this makes things really confused. I mean, you can see here the 2P10 kind of tapers off and falls off. And that's pretty normal because it didn't have any wood breakage at all. So it's a pretty straight line. It's the exact same on this as the others. And some of these tend to go a little wild, um, such as the West system was really good and then came down and is spiking back up. Um, and some of them have increased in value and some of them have stayed flat and some of them have gone up and down. This is really kind of a mess. And this is what makes me think, I don't really trust those adjusted numbers because they're they're not scientific. It's objective. It's not subjective. So let's actually move up here to the actual numbers, the yearly averages. And these things really clear out and makes a lot more sense. You can see the 2P10 starts off really strong. Um, it was one of the strongest glues right off the bat, uh, but it drops off very, very quickly. And uh, so this is one of the things with the super glue is it's far more brittle. And over time with the expansion and contraction, it weakens. And you can see how it weakened pretty quickly over the first year. And now it's started to mellow out a bit. And so I'm I don't know how long it's going to maintain it. This will it eventually fall off because of the expansion and contraction. I don't know. Uh, some of the glues actually increased a little bit. Both of the high glues increased a little bit over the first year and then have kind of tapered out a bit. Um, so it was interesting to see. Some of them have uh, dropped off a little bit. The, the Type Mon 2 has uh, decreased a little bit, um, as well as the Elmer's Wood Glue Max, both of those being PVA glues. Um, whereas the DAP Weldwood and the Epoxy, um, they have been a little over the place. And one of the things I found out with both of those is they are very, very dependent on the wood itself and how they can work into it. 
Um, and so some of those might be varying as I test board to board. Now each year as I do the test, um, each of these tests are done on a different board. So you can see there are 10 different tests that are done and I use a different board each, each one. And so that way I'm not really dependent on any one particular board, but hey, I may have a selection of harder boards one year and slightly softer boards the other year. They're all the same maple. Um, I tried to get them all from the same, same place, but they probably came from slightly different trees. And so there is a slight difference from board to board, but they are all hard maple. So there's the basic information. Uh, there's not a huge amount to this that is changed. And really, I've been very surprised with how most of these have held off, with the exception of 2P10, the, the super glue. Cyanoraclate, it's a really good glue for short-term fixes. It's a really good glue for fixes that don't require a lot of force, small boxes and things. It would be fantastic for that. Inlays, perfect. Uh, but for something that's in a lot of stress, it's not a good structural glue. Surprise, surprise. Um, Everything else is holding fairly well, and I, I'm kind of liking this. I'm looking forward to seeing how this progresses over the years. Um, so to give you a little idea, yes, this spreadsheet has a lot of numbers, and then I have other things down here where you can look at just the long grain to long grain, just the long grain to ingrain, just the gap filling, just the exterior numbers and seeing how those all fall off. Um, the overall numbers, actually comparing all of them, so each one has the dots from all of them to see how well they do. Um, the overall without the exterior, because that makes things a little bit cleaner. Um, and then the interesting one that I really like is the high glue, is to see how do high glues um, hold up to each other. Um, so the, uh, the fish glue was actually, wow, 613. Um, that was crazy phenomenal. And uh, yeah, they're actually really, really good glues. Um, yeah, <laughs> high glue, who would have known? So there's the spreadsheet and data. I'd love to hear your ideas on this. So another year of glue testing done, and I, I, I really like this one. This is one that I look forward to every year. Um, I have one more year where I'm going to do them every six months. So you'll see another update the end of December next year, and uh, we will have the measurements from six months and a year added by then. Whew, this is going to be fun because I am hoping to be doing this test until the day I die. So um, we'll have a long-term data, but hopefully by then glues won't completely phase out, but we've been using high glue for a couple thousand years, so I think it'll be okay until I die. Now, I know every time I do a glue test, there are lots of questions and objections and thoughts, and throw those in the comments down below. We can talk through it, and I definitely say go take a look at a lot of the old videos. I have talked through this many, many times, and I've answered most of the questions on there. This is one of those tests that I'm really, really satisfied with how this came out. And it's, this is one of those things that I, I generally consider to be one of my greatest achievements because it is a, a, it's, it's a lot of fun. So if you want to see that, I'll have links to all those videos down below. If you have questions, let me know those down below. Hitting the comment, like, subscribe, share. Those things really help out and help get this in front of more people. So if you think of someone who this would be interesting for, it, go ahead and share it with them. That does help us out. Thank you for that. Also, you can become a patron on Patreon. Everyone's scrolling over to the side. They are the ones who quite literally fund this and keep it going. So if you like the tests that we do here, think about becoming a patron on Patreon. They also get early access to all the data. I put out this a couple weeks ago so that they can take a look through it on there. As well as members on the channel, people who've clicked that little join button down below, they also get early access to this as well. We do have other perks that they get, and so thank you for that. Without patrons and members, this channel wouldn't exist. So thank you. On that note, I think they'll do it for now. Until next time, have a wonderful day. Stay glued to this channel because this is a sticky situation. <laughs> Never mind, I'm just testing you.